man, that was crazy. Home Martian one. How is the Gollum? What is going on? That would be so hype if they're like, haha, you fools, we wanted the game to be shit. The Lord of the Rings Gollum is probably one of the worst games that came out last year. If you've been following video games for a while now, you might have heard of it because it is almost universally considered as not very good. Which for some people was quite a surprise because the developer, Daedalic, was generally known to make quite good games. And for a while it was even the darling of the German games industry. And now after what happened to Gollum, they stopped making games altogether. So what happened? Just to make things clear, I'm not trying to defend the game. Players deserve a qualitative and finished experience for the price they're paying for this game. But the story about all the things that happened at Data Lake is actually quite an interesting one and shed some light on a few other problems that the game industry has at the moment. If anything, I hope that someone might be able to learn something from the situation, because in the end it's just sad. So let's take a look at Gollum and Data Lake, and if you like the video, you know, click the corresponding buttons and all this stuff that's usually happening. A few years ago I used to teach a class where one assignment was a presentation about what job you want to do in the future, in what position in the games industry, or at which company do you see yourself in five years. And quite a common answer to this question was Datalik Entertainment. Now Datalik is basically a company that was made around the work of one individual in particular, Jan Baumann, also known as Poki. For his graduation project, Poki designed and programmed a narrative point-and-click adventure game, which was called Edna Bricht Aus. And he basically did everything by himself. He was doing the artwork, he was doing the programming, he was doing the music. The whole game was just him. At some point, apparently during his final presentation, he met Carsten Fichtelmann, with whom he ended up founding a studio. While Poki was responsible for actually making games, Carsten handled the business side of the project. And quite from the get-go, Datalik had a lot of success. They won a lot of prizes, they produced a lot of games, most of them not very big, but they had a very loyal and very dedicated following. Both the Edna series and Poki's other bigger project, the Deponia series, were actually quite successful. As I mentioned before, they ended up kind of becoming Germany's darling in the video game industry. Because while Germany is quite big and quite industrialized, they are not really huge players when it comes to game development. If you're looking for game developers in Germany, you will find a lot of small to mid-sized companies, but there is no traditionally German huge game design studio, like Nintendo would be for Japan, or Ubisoft would be for France, or CD Projekt Red for Poland. So when Data was celebrated internationally for being a company that might make small games but made them with love and care. That was actually something that was very well received. However, that situation would not hold on forever. There were a few things that, as time went on, turned out to be a bit more problematic than some people would like to admit. But there were two things that had a big influence on the further development of the company. If you speak German, I actually suggest that you watch the report that Game 2 made on Daedalic and Gollum. They did a lot more research than me and even got interviews with some old employees from Daedalic, which paints a really good picture of the company both at the time of their founding and at the time of Gollum. Crunch is not something that is unheard of in the game industry. Many developers spend a lot more time than they're actually supposed to on finishing or just generally working on a project. 50 or 60 hour weeks are quite common even if you're just in a 40 hour contract. And companies often do get away with it, but the employees themselves often end up burned out. This was also the case at Daedalic. From the very beginning they did not have very strict work hours and management especially seemed to really expect the people to just stay there until the job is finished. Poki himself, as the creative director, admitted that he probably set a bad example, because the way he worked was just very confusing for other people. He arrived at the office very early, worked overnight without even realizing it, and a lot of the young people basically saw that and thought, okay, that's how we do things here. You also have to think about the fact that, especially in the beginning, many of their employees were still young and very motivated. They didn't have that much experience in the industry yet, so they just gave 120% without thinking of any consequences. But supposedly that was not the only questionable practice 
within the company. According to some interviews, compensation was generally quite bad. In some cases, management didn't even want to pay minimum wage and they even tried to have employees sign special contracts that were basically saying that they agreed to those conditions, which I haven't seen the contracts, but to me that seems very shady. In addition to that, there was also talk about mistreatment by management. Both the CEO, Carsten Fichtelmann, and the guy called Stefan Harms, who joined the company a little bit later as COO, were supposedly very strict and quickly reacted emotional when talking to their employees, which obviously led to a culture of fear and employees being scared of talking to their supervisors, which is really not something you want in a good working environment. These are not conditions in which you can get the best out of your workers. No, not at all. The second thing that went wrong with Datalik was their process of reinventing themselves, if you could call it that. In 2014, Datalik was bought by the German publishing house Bastei Lübbe, which at first glance seems to be something good, right? The company gets more money, they can make bigger games, Everyone's happy, but Bastai also had bigger expectations of Daedalic. They wanted to see the company grow. And I actually think that was also something that at least Fichtelmann and Harms were quite interested in. I already mentioned that Germany did not have any big game developer at that time. And I don't know, maybe they saw the possibility for Daedalic to fill that hole if they were somehow able to make games that do not only appeal to the narrative point and click players, but to a wider audience. Which means that from that point on, Daedalic tried to experiment with new formats, new gameplay styles. But unfortunately, that did not really work as well as they hoped it would. The first game to mention here would be Silence, which was supposed to be a 3D story game, kind of similar to what Telltale does with The Walking Dead. They still wanted to focus on narrative, which was their strength, but they hoped that having a nice 3D environment to explore would make the game a little bit more approachable for other audiences. And the game was actually quite nice. It's a very beautiful game, but it took their like, way, way longer to develop that game that they were expecting, which again, according to interviews from people who actually worked at those games, was mostly due to lack of experience. The people working at Daedalic were not bad developers. They had just a completely different specialization. Most of them were 2D artists and never really did a lot with 3D, which means in a 2D project they were quite able to just churn out one piece of content after the other. But with 3D there was more trial and error involved. and. Obviously, if a project takes longer, it also means it becomes more expensive. So while the developers ended up with a game that they were actually quite happy with, it was still far from a financial success for the company. But the worst thing about this is that apparently they did not really learn from their mistakes. The same thing would happen for many of their following titles. Pillars of the Earth, State of Mind, all of those projects were really ambitious. They wanted to do a lot and they wanted to make like really big and nice games. But most of the time the team that they had actually didn't have the experience to meet those goals. So production became more complicated, releases were delayed, costs increased and the final game flopped. Probably the worst example and a project where they should have learned something for such a big thing as Gollum would be is probably the game A Year of Rain. A Year of Rain was supposed to be Daedalic's service game. That was the game that was supposed to give Daedalic a steady cash flow, a steady income to better finance their other projects. Which was also something that they heavily advertised with their community. They repeatedly told them they will keep working on it, they will keep improving it, and after just three months the game shut down. According to a statement from Daedalic, because people didn't keep playing it, so there was no sense in keeping the game alive. And the next is just a personal opinion, but one thing that you can see here is that Daedalic did neither focus on their own strengths as a company. The whole company was built around people making narrative games and they were supposedly really really good at that, but they tried to get away from this. And at the same time they didn't get any outside expertise for the games they wanted to make. It's fine if you want to reinvent yourself, it's fine if you want to introduce new elements in your project, but you need to have people who are able to do those things. And sometimes that just means getting help. Now it would be okay if that happened just once. You learn from it, you know what to do next time, move on, all fine. But what we can see here is that that ended up being the norm. They had a lot of games where they made 
the same mistakes over and over again. And instead of actually improving, things just seem to get worse and worse. And in the end, even their creative director, Pokey, the guy who was the face of the company, he was the reason the whole company was made. His games were what made Derelic Derelic left the company. Apparently Pokey was still working on some ideas that he had for any future games, but he never got the green light from management to actually start making those games. So right now we're at the point where Data Lake was about to start their biggest project yet. Something where it was already a little bit of a miracle that they were able to get the rights for it. And they haven't figured out a working production pipeline, they have problems with their working culture, and the guy who was the face of the company just left. That's when they started making Golem. Some of you might have already played Golem, and if not, you have probably seen some people on YouTube or Twitch stream it. If you want to get a better picture of its problems, I suggest looking up people like Moist Critical, who spent quite a lot of time with that title and demonstrate just how bad of an experience that game actually is. Now, I do agree with some takes that the game is not all bad, but you do have a hard time to focus on the few good things it offers with all the other stuff going on. Like most other Daedalic games, Golem was made story first. Now, first working on a story is not necessarily a bad thing per se, but especially for a big title, basically a triple A, this might get a little bit more problematic since you have to somehow marry the gameplay elements with the narrative, which becomes harder if you start working on the gameplay later on. The game itself had probably too many features and all of them had their own problems. None of them really seemed finished when the game released. In addition, there were less people working on the game. Apparently, if you take a look through the credits, you would only find about a third of the programmers that you probably find in a similar title, like, I don't know, Tomb Raider or The Last of Us. And from what Daedalic themselves claimed, the game had only a budget of 50 million euro, which is a tenth of what you usually nowadays spend for a game of that size. I don't even know how they paid all of their employees. Oh, oh, once again, we know the drill. The game got delayed, but in the end, even that delay wasn't able to save the game. According to some people working on it, they were really just trying to minimize the damage. And the aftermath? 25 people got fired and Daedalic announced that they will stop making games altogether. They're still doing some publishing, which they are quite successful at, but the people who were actually making games got mostly kicked out of the company. During the discussion around Baldur's Gate, I talked about many people pointing out that allegedly Western game development has a problem with overspending. And while this is true, that games like Alan Wake 2 and Baldur's Gate 3 show that it is possible for smaller companies to make qualitative games that resonate with their audiences. Gollum, however, is a good example of the opposite situation. Game developers underestimating the effort and expertise it takes to actually make a good gaming experience. Now, all of this should not matter for you as a player. You are not responsible in any way to compensate for the bad decisions of a company. And I don't want you to go out and buy the game just because you feel bad for the people working there or anything like this. You have a right to be upset. But maybe after watching this video you do have a better idea about what some people who are working in the game industry are actually going through. Because believe it or not, those people are also the ones who are reading your posts on social media. There are a lot of things that are wrong in today's game industry. And quite often the people who say suffer most from it are the ones who don't deserve to blame. Making video games is not easy, but it is still something a lot of people are very passionate about. And we hear those kind of stories like with Daedalic more and more lately. So I really hope that people learn from this. But that's basically all I want to talk about today. If you enjoyed the video, you know, click the like button, subscribe to my channel, leave a comment. Other than that, I hope you have a great day and see you guys in the next video. Cheers.